And on the banks of the Tennessee River, welcome to Neyland Stadium here in Knoxville, Tennessee. It is homecoming, and the Volunteers hope to pick up another win against the Charlotte 49ers of Conference USA. Welcome, everybody. A tremendous afternoon here in the Volunteer State. I am Mike Morgan alongside the Alabama All-American Barrett Jones. And Barrett, the goal for this Tennessee team has been simple. Get to a bowl game. In order to get there, they need more improved play out of their starting quarterback, Jarrett Garantano. Yeah, one of the bright spots of this season has been the development of Jarrett Garantano from year one to year two. I broke down a lot of film of Jarrett this week. I noticed two big things. Number one, Jarrett has great arm talent. He can make all the throws. You see him right here. He, he throws a great deep ball. He hits uh, Josh Palmer in the corner of the end zone. The problem this year has been his O-line giving him time to be able to develop those deep plays. But probably the biggest thing that stood out to me was his toughness. This guy will take shots, and he'll take a lot of shots probably today. He's taking shots in every game, but he stands in there. He makes big throws like this throw right here to set up a game winner to Jawan Jennings. So Garantano has been much improved this season. Let's see if he continues to improve and takes another step forward today. Charlotte won the toss and elected to defer. That's Jonathan Cruz, the freshman kicker, who has been a godsend for the 49ers, who were probably the worst field goal kicking team last year, but he's been terrific this year. Madre London back deep for Tennessee. Volunteers coming into this game. They need to win three out of their last four games to be bowl eligible. It all starts tonight against Charlotte. This is Bryce Thompson, the freshman on the return. Past the 15, weaving his way down to the 29-yard line where the Volunteers will set up shop. And setting up shop down on the sideline is our own Taylor Davis. Yeah, guys, that tough loss to South Carolina last week made quite an impact on this Tennessee team. Coach Pruitt told me that was the game he had circled on his calendar at the beginning of the season, knowing it would be a tough test for his team. The players told me that loss was painful. They are committed to improving, and it starts here tonight, guys. Taylor, great point. It's been six days. They've been trying to flush out the negative vibe from that game and trying to get some positive momentum back, much like they had against the win against the Auburn Tigers as they go to the ground on first down with Tim Jordan, the sophomore. What do we know about Jarrett Garantano, Barrett? Yeah, Jared Garantano, he's a guy who really is, is, again, been getting a lot better this season. You know, the big question today is that offensive line, right? The offensive line has been much maligned this year. They lost their best player, Trey Smith, probably for the season. Uh, so there's no help on the way. Uh, they've really had a tough time being able to project, protect Jarrett. But this kid is tough, and his accuracy has continued to get better. But the thing he's probably done best, you see that number down there, two interceptions. He's taking great care of the football this season. The word you keep hearing from the coaching staff and teammates alike, toughness when describing Garantano. And Garantano's going to have to be tough as he takes his first hit of the game, a sack by Charlotte. Knifing in for the sack is Alex Highsmith, his third sack of the year, a loss of 10. Yeah, this has been the problem all year. They've had a lot of penetration back there. They've turned a lot of guys loose. Uh, just kind of a, a disaster as far as giving up a bunch of sacks. you got to keep Jared Gar Gar Garantano upright, particularly in a game like this. You want to be able, him to be able to get to a rhythm early. The Charlotte defense has been salty all year long. They're sixth in the nation stopping the run, and that time very effective against the pass. It'll be third and 15 now for the Vols. Three-man rush. Now somebody coming off the edge, and the pass is complete. At the 38, past the 40, a first down for Marquez Callaway. 20 yards on the pickup. And yeah, we talked about his toughness in the open. Jared Garantano stands in here, takes a huge shot right in the ribs, and delivers right to his man, Marquez Callaway. That's what he's done all season. He's had to stand there and take shots because he's had unblocked guys coming off the edge. A great strike to Callaway to pick up a big first down. Callaway along with Jawan Jennings, very productive wide receiver tandem. They're not the fastest, but they're big and physical. And this year they've been reliable as well. Jeremy Banks in the backfield to the left of Garantano here on first down. And they'll go to the ground, and no holes supplied there by that O-line. It is a traffic jam at the line of scrimmage. Alex Highsmith in on the stop for Charlotte, as well as Tyreek Harris. You look at the starting lineup for that Tennessee offense. Again, there's a lot to like with the skilled players here, Barrett. Yeah, I think number eight, Ty Chandler, is their best player on offense, probably. I mean, he's the guy. I know he's a little banged up today, so we might not see him too much. But he's the guy who can really take the top off. 
The other guys, they really don't have a true speed threat in the wide receiver core, but to me, Ty Chandler is a guy who's going to develop into a really good running back. They also could, really good in the receiving game. If they could just figure out how to make do with a patchwork offensive line, that has plagued them all year long. Garantano does have time here and delivers a strike, but good defense on the play. Great coverage that time by the safety, Ben DeLuca, who is second all time in Charlotte history in total tackles. Yeah, nice, nice job right there by DeLuca getting in there. Textbook might have gotten that left hand a little early. We call that the grab and swat technique. Does a nice job of swatting that ball away with his right hand. Doesn't turn the body. That's a good no call right there. But yeah, DeLuca has been a rock for these guys. 60 tackles so far on the season. Uh, just leading the team in tackles. Also a big time leader back there in the back end. He's majoring in communication studies, Mike. What would you want a safety to major in? Yeah, absolutely. 15 tackles last week and that went over Southern Miss. Another third down, third and 10. From the pocket, Garantano fires and that's almost intercepted. Again, he gets hit as he throws and a penalty flag on the field. We'll see what that's all about. Yeah, watch right here. It's a three man rush. We talked about this offensive line. When you have a three man rush, there is absolutely no reason for there to be one cent of pressure. The illegal formation, number 51 offense. He was not lined up on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So once again, the problems with the O line rear their ugly heads on the opening drive of the volunteers who will be forced to punt. Yeah, Mike, and I think talking to a lot of people around the community this week, I know you said the same thing. Like, you know, people haven't maybe heard of Charlotte because they had a rebranding a few right. years ago. Charlotte's a Conference USA team. Like, they're not a bad team here. This is a quality football team with a high-quality defense. Absolutely. They've actually got a chance to make a bowl game of their own, just two wins away from eligibility. From the 10, this is Quattlebaum, and he'll race out of bounds at the 22-yard line. A 45-yard punt. Charlotte takes over when we come back from Knoxville. Scoreless game, first quarter, and our first look at the Charlotte 49ers offense led by that man, the former Miami Hurricane, Evan Sheriffs, a redshirt junior out of Jefferson High School in Georgia. He took over the job when starting quarterback Chris Reynolds had a season ending ankle injury back on October the 13th against Western Kentucky. They love to run the football with number 32 in the backfield, Benny LeMay. And it's LeMay on first down between the tackles and picks up good yardage, a pickup of five as we check in with Taylor. Guys, Charlotte will be without their star receiver, Victor Tucker, today. He left the Southern Miss game last week with a hamstring injury. He was considered day-to-day -day this week, but he is unavailable today. They are looking for true freshman Rico Arnold to step up. He got a lot of reps during pregame and looked good, guys, so they help, hope he can contribute early. Yeah, losing Tucker is huge. He's by far and away their leading receiver. 46 grabs on the year. Looking to throw here on second down. Sheriffs finds no one and throws it away. Yeah, Batuli kind of, with the pressure. Kind of a broken play there, but you talked about it. Sheriffs, you know, once a Miami recruit, so you know he's got a little bit of talent. Uh, hasn't thrown the football too terribly effectively so far. But this is a running football team. Benny LeMay can play, right? This guy's a good player. And this offensive line has some good players. Keep an eye on right tackle Nate Davis, the coaching staff. That's Charlotte feels like he has NFL talent. So there's some there's some talent up front here for the 49ers. LeMay in camp in the backfield on third down and five. That's camp in motion. Sheriffs, Cox and fires over the middle, complete at the 35, a first down and then some for Rico Arnold, the freshman that Taylor just told you about, picks up 15. Yeah, this has been a point of emphasis for this defense all season. They're one of the worst in the conference on third down, allowing 39% of conversions. See right here, just a little zone route, just sitting right there in the hole. A nice job by Sheriffs. Go into a second option, finding the read, settling down. We talked about Rico Arnold. There he is, making an impact early. First and 10 from the 41, it's LeMay. Probing the right side and escorted out of bounds by Daniel Batuli, the junior, one of the top tacklers on this Tennessee defense with 45 stops on the year. And I expect to see a lot of runs to the right today. We talked about Nate Davis, that right tackle. 
Benny LeMay likes running behind. Kind of the beef of that offensive line is to the right. This is a Charlotte team that last year went 1 and 11. They changed both coordinators, and now they feel like they're on a roll with a good chance to make it to a bowl game this season. Obviously, a chance at history here today. As that will go for four yards, ball spills out. And Tennessee has it. A fumble by Charlotte, picked up by the Volunteers. Yeah, turnovers has not been a strength this so far, Tennessee. Looks like he's got that elbow down. I think yeah, we'll take a look at this one. It looked like it came out late. Yeah, you, you could tell Benny LeMay didn't really scramble for the football. It looks like that. It looks like that. That right elbow to me was down when he spun him around. Yeah. A good job trying to swat that ball out. But I have a feeling they're going to take a look at this one. Now, as they take a look at it, we'll take time out. No score in Knoxville. Waiting on the official call on the field on whether or not it was a fumble. Uh, Better than May. After, after further review, the ball carrier was down at the 48 and a half yard line. It was Charlotte's ball first and 10. From this vantage point, certainly looked like the right call, Barry. Yeah, the fans don't like it, but it is a good call. Watch the right elbow right here of Benny LeMay. You see it kind of right there. It's already down. Good call by the officials to go back and take a look at it and get it right. The fans didn't like it, but it was the right call. So the Charlotte drive continues. That's a first down for the 49ers. This will be the sixth play of the drive. It's a Tennessee defense that has been tested a lot already this season. They are thin, banged up in this game as well without Micah Abernathy and Trevon Flowers, two of their top men in the secondary. Modest gain on first down as we check in for the first time with Darinoka. All right, guys, thank you much. Let's update Georgia, Kentucky. After Georgia recovered a Kentucky fumble, bad snap for the dogs. Guess who? Josh Allen recovers for Kentucky. 7-0 Georgia late first. Now Georgia jumping out to an early 7-0 lead over Kentucky. Two marquee matchups today in the Southeastern Conference. That one will determine the East. And for the most part, What's the, the other one, Mike? The winner of LSU Alabama, which I know you'll be watching. Well, heck, we'll both be watching it. LSU and Alabama will likely determine the Western Division crown. I think our whole crew will be watching it. We're not going to invite the motorcycle gang staying at our hotel, but, <laughs> but the rest of us will be there and watching it and enjoying that game uh, tonight. Mike, one thing you mentioned earlier, you mentioned that how thin this Tennessee defense was. I think that's the perfect word for it. You know, they really have some good starters along that front with four seniors kind of anchoring that defensive line. The coach Pruitt told us behind that they're extremely thin. Not a lot of depth up front for these guys. And so, you know, if Charlotte can continue to run the football, get these guys tired, that's a situation Tennessee does not want to be in with that lack of depth. Eighth play of the drive. It's third down, third down and six. And we're going to get an offsides here. A little surprised they blew this one dead. Looks like he got back in time. False start, oh. offense, number 32. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's very interesting. On the running back. Wow. Benny LeMay. That's, I'm very surprised here. If we take another look at this one, it looks like that defensive end jumps first to me. And that's what makes Benny LeMay, that's a terrible call right there. Wow. Against the <laughs> Niners. That's clearly he was drawn off there. Yeah. Benny LeMay saying, what did I do? Yeah, it looks like number 13, DeAndre Johnson. I, I don't, I can't blame Benny LeMay. He sees a guy jump off sides. So now third down in 11. They need the 38 of Charlotte. Trips to the near side. Sheriffs under pressure and it's deflected away. Tennessee, three orange jerseys come crashing in and Sheriffs never had a chance. N nice job right there by guy Kyle Phillips. He had an interception for a touchdown only two weeks ago against the University of Tennessee. Watch, watch, big, watch big Kyle Phillips right here. Get in here, get his hands up. It's a screen. That's what you're taught in a screen. When you, you see you got penetration and it's too late to turn around, you try to get your hands up, bat that ball down. A great job by Kyle Phillips. 
So the defense tightens up when it needs to. Marquez Callaway back to receive the punt from Kyle Corbett. Line drive that takes a bounce at the 15 and detours out of bounds. We do have a flag now, though. At the six yard line. And a penalty flag all the way back near the line of scrimmage. It was a 43 yard punt. Yeah, I have a feeling that this one's on Charlotte. They're probably going to make him kick it again. That was a pretty good punt there, winding up at the five yard line. Looks like an illegal formation. Illegal formation, kicking team, too many players in the backfield, five yard penalty, replay fourth down. Steve Matlow, our referee today. Yep. Very common penalty. You still have to have somebody on the line of scrimmage. Sometimes those gunners like to get a little bit off the football, trying to get around that cornerback, but got to be up there snug. Good decision here by Tennessee to make him re kick it. 10 on the line for the Volunteers. And it's caught on the run at the 18 by Callaway. And Callaway's got a convoy down the sideline. One more block and he's gone. He gets it and he gets six. Two yard touchdown for Marquez Callaway. Yeah, great job right there by Marquez Callaway. Looked like Charlotte was trying to punt the ball to the right sideline. And so that's where all the defenders were heading, all the tacklers, Marquez Callaway. So all the kicks was pulled a little bit to the left. It was a low line drive kick. Did a fantastic job of fielding it and taking it for six. Marquez Callaway told us he hasn't gotten a haircut since the fifth grade. He's not going to cut it now. He also told us he didn't have a touchdown all season. Yes. He wanted to make his dad proud right here. Marquez Callaway, Tennessee, finding a way to get some playmakers on the field. A great job taking the line drive punt and turn it into six. Seven balls, zero Charlotte as we're in the midway first quarter. Marquez Callaway, who last returned a punt for a touchdown two years ago against Tennessee Tech. He's finally got his first touchdown of the year. He said his dad was giving him a hard time. How come you haven't found the end zone? He just found it, Barrett Jones. Yeah, that's one way to find it right there with a great athletic play right there. Getting the ball in his hands and just took it for six. That was awesome job by Marquez Callaway, making his family proud. Longtime military family, a great kid. We enjoyed visiting with him this week. and. Excited to see him get his first touchdown of the season. He was a lot of fun to talk to and all these veteran players from Tennessee. They've been through a lot going back to last season. From the four. And stacked up at the 21 yard line on the return. That's McAllister. Let's take another look at that return. Yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit. Watch Kyle Corbett, the punter. It's supposed to be a kick to the right and he yanks it a little bit to the left. Take a look, look at all these defenders right here. They're all going for the right sideline return. There's nobody over here on the right side of the field. He pulls the punt. It's hard to blame almost the, the Niners right there. He only has one man to beat, number 40, uh, Kyle Corbett. But a great job by Marquez Kelly once he gets the ball in his hand, making a few guys miss, using that speed and taking it for six. But a poor punt right there by, by Kyle Corbett set that touchdown up for Marquez Callaway. Second drive now for the 49ers from the 20. And the throw is caught at the 34 yard line, a pickup of 13 yard line, 13 yards. That's Rico Arnold, the freshman we talked about, filling in for Victor Tucker. Yeah, already making his presence known. And remember, Tennessee today and most of the season has been starting two freshman cornerbacks. Alante Taylor and Bryce Thompson, number six and 20. They have high hopes for these guys. They think they're going to eventually be really good players, and they're glad that they're getting some experience. But it's still, you're going to occasionally see some fresh mistakes by these guys. LeMay, the lone back on first down. And he'll run right into some heavy traffic. Gobbles up three. Brad Lambert is the head coach of the Charlotte 49ers. He's been there 
for all six seasons they've had a football team. He actually got the job when they were on the ground floor. They didn't even have a team yet, and he was hired. He helped plans on the stadium for Charlotte. He's a guy who really made a name for himself as a defensive coordinator for Jim Grobe at Wake Forest. Remember, they made it to the Orange Bowl after a 2006 season in which they won the ACC. They wound up losing that Orange Bowl to Louisville. Well, that was one of the more incredible accomplishments that we've seen in the ACC for Wake Forest to go on and win the championship. And he was orchestrating the defense on that Demon Deacon squad. Sheriff's trying to orchestrate a run here under hot pursuit and just short of the first down marker. And now a late flag on the play. Yeah, let's see here if they possibly got a late hit here. On Sheriffs. Well, Sheriffs was beginning his slide. Always tricky. When he got hit by Alante Taylor, the freshman. I know that this is one of the defensive players always whine and complain. Think about it, you're running 20 miles an hour straight mm -hmm. at a guy. He starts to slide. It's tough to pull up. I think when you see it in slow motion sometimes, it looks like it's easy. I can promise you. It's not, and make no mistake, I never ran 20 miles an hour in my life, Mike. <laughs> Neither do you, but I tell you, for those guys, it's uh, it's tough because there's some serious speed in these SEC backfields. I wasn't aware you clocked me any time uh, recently. <laughs> <clears throat> well, there, there must be some discussion here, so. It's not cut and dry. Personal foul, targeting defense. Yeah. Well, that's where the discussion comes. Was it just yep. a late hit or was it targeting? And they call it on the field targeting, so now that means they're going to well, take another take look at it here. Oh, man, that is so tough. It looks like number six, Alante Taylor, coming in from the side. Oh, and you hate that. That That is, I mean, let, let me start here. It's textbook targeting, right? Well, what, what the yeah. rule is, right. it is targeting. Okay. Yes. He's going to get kicked out of the game. Yes, and it's unfortunate. But here's. Here's the real life situation, right? Okay. The, the quarterback is sliding, so he's lowering his head. Right. And Alante Taylor, see, he's not he's going low. He's trying to grab him around the waist, but then the quarterback is simultaneously sliding. Right. I don't know how you do that as a defender. Let's take a listen. Uh, you can clearly hear that helmet to helmet contact right there. And, now, and, and again, it seems like we, we find ourselves saying this every week in college football. After further review, number six did target the ball carrier. The 15 yard penalty will be assessed at the end of the run, and number six is disqualified. That's a pretty big loss, too, because Alante Taylor, just a freshman, is one of their best defensive backs. The good news is he will be back next week because it's the first half. But, you know, Barrett, we, we find ourselves saying this every week in college football, and that is by the letter of the law, it's the right call. But very few of us like the letter of the law. Well, first of all, I, I hate. I hate that you can be ejected from a game in college. I mean, you only have so many opportunities to suit up and play with your right. teammates in college football. Okay, at the very minimum, Mike, we got to make two different kinds of targeting penalties. I'm with you. Right, because some are they egregious and they're, you know, maybe you're launching at a player and you're yeah. trying to hurt a guy. Okay, yeah. But, but clearly right there, Elante Taylor was trying to wrap the guy up around the chest or waist area. Correct. And the quarterback started to slide. I mean, he had already put his head down when the slide began. How could he know where the head was going to be? I hate the fact that you can be kicked out of that game. And there, I know there's been a lot of buzz this week about Devin White missing the second half, excuse me, the first half of this Alabama game. I'm with you a thousand percent. I think 15 yards is punitive enough in a situation like that. Pass swung out far side and down to the 37 yard line. That is Warpe Kofa, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, a gain of six. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing where if you get a targeting penalty, unless it's unbelievably egregious, maybe give them a warning. And on the second one, you get kicked out. Seems overly punitive for right now. Yeah, I agree. And Tennessee's going to have to overcome this. is not a It's not a deep team at any spot, really. Whether it's defense or offense. Well, especially defensively, they have no depth, really, and so they really can't afford to lose anybody else. Already missing another strong freshman, Trevon Flowers. And Micah Abernathy as well is out with a broken collarbone. Penalty flag pre-snap. And here I go, talking good about the right tackle in the open, Nate Davis. Ball start offense, number 64, five yard penalty, second down. Come on, Nate Davis. I talk good about you, man. I think you're a good player. I enjoyed watching this guy on tape. Look at big Nate Davis right here. 
I love his balance and body control. But unfortunately, right here, he does not know the snap count. And he jumps offside. How do you guys mess that up routine? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be hiding now. I was about to say, I, I'll have you know that I, I think I might have gotten one false start penalty in my whole career. Uh, that one was probably the quarterback's fault. That's probably. why you're an All-American. And an Outland Trophy winner. And the accolades for Barrett Jones will continue as the broadcast does. Tipped up in the air and falling incomplete. Getting his big paw on it was a defensive end, Kyle Phillips. Again, Kyle Phillips gets his paw on another pass. Watch big Kyle Phillips right here. A fantastic job again. This disrupts quick passing game. It's an RPO, a good read by Sheriffs to pull the ball and try to throw that quick slant. He had the slant open, but Kyle Phillips gets in the passing lane and cuts it off. That's kind of the new thing in college football, really, in the last five or six years. Because quarterbacks are getting the ball out of their hands so quickly, you got to be able to jump up and bat that ball down if you can't affect the passer. Phillips, one of the three seniors on that defensive line. A third down and nine for Charlotte. They need the 32. Here comes a blitz. Sheriff's in trouble, somehow evades it, and then gets clocked at the 37. It'll be fourth down. Kyle Phillips again coming in for the Volunteers. Yeah, Jeremy Pruitt dialed up a pressure right here. Man, you got to make that play, play right there if you're Bryce Thompson. You got Sheriff's dead to rights. You let him snug, snuggle out of that pocket somehow. And now it looks like they're, they're keeping the offense on the field here, fourth and five. The 37-yard line kind of an awkward, no punt range. Yeah, their, their kicker, Jonathan Cruz, has a strong leg. He hit a 54-yarder earlier this season. But they will go for it here on fourth down and five. A 54-yarder at Neyland Stadium is a lot different than a 54-yarder at home. I can assure you that. More pressure, and Sheriffs just hurried the throw yep. as it goes incomplete, intended for Arnold. Markeel Osborne on the coverage. And that's that's really what we've seen all season from Tennessee is they've had to bring pressure. They are not, they really can't get pressure with their front four. They gotta find a way to get pressure. As we see 7-0, balls are up, almost into the first. Coming up next on the SEC Network, Week 10 of the college football season rolls on with Louisiana Tech and Mississippi State in our Saturday night matchup presented by Holiday Inn Express. You can also watch it live on the ESPN app from anywhere. Mike Morgan with Barrett Jones, Taylor Davis on the sideline here in Knoxville. It is homecoming. Volunteers looking to pick up victory number four on the year, trying to navigate their way through the end of the season. And Make it back to a bowl game. Chandler is the back on first down. Garantano rolling out and hits a man underneath. And that'll be a first down for Marquez Callaway, a pickup of 12. And Marquez Callaway really starting to find his stride early over the last few weeks. Had nine receptions last week against South Carolina. He's been Jared Garantano's go-to target really in these last few weeks. Wolf in the game, the tight end who last week scored his first touchdown against South Carolina. A loss of two on the play, Alex Highsmith with another tackle. It's Jeremy Banks, the freshman on the carry. Let's, let's take a late look right here at Jared Garantano, what he's done so far in this game. He's really gotten beat up pretty good. The 49ers have been able to get pressure on him all day, gave up a sack early. Another big hit right here on this early third down. He's you see it only a three-man rush and still getting pressure. He's, you know, for, for a guy who's been hit as many times as he has this season, he, he's shown incredible toughness to keep getting up and taking those hits and firing them in. And you learn, you earn the respect of your teammates when you do that, don't There's you? There's no doubt. Garantano with time. Uncorks one down the sideline. A perfect throw and a perfect over-the-shoulder catch by Dominic Wood Anderson, the tight end. A fantastic throw right here by Jared Garantano. One thing the offensive coordinator Tyson uh, Helton talked to us about is Jared Garantano throwing guys open a little more. A great job right here. Has his tight end down the sideline. He's well covered, but a perfect throw right on that outside shoulder, just like you draw it up. And that's Jawan Foggy right there in coverage. But you can't beat a perfect throw. Mention the toughness of Garantano the accuracy has been there this year in spite of the fact he rarely has much time to throw Good 
Garantano out of Lodi, New Jersey. Hands it off here, and that will be stuffed near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Mike, you understand, uh, you talked about that accuracy under pressure. Like, most quarterbacks don't have that. You see right here another run stuff right here by this 49ers defense. Haven't been able to get anything going so far in the run game. But most quarterbacks really... When they start getting hit a lot, they start seeing shadows, seeing ghosts, and they're not able to stand in there and take those hits. Garantano has been able to do that this year. He's been hit over and over by this porous offensive line, and still, he keeps hanging in there and making big throws. Garantano at a Bergen Catholic High School in New Jersey, kind of a powerhouse program there. They didn't throw the ball much in high school, but Garantano was very efficient, made him a top recruit, came to Knoxville, it was not a good year for him last year. A lot of people questioned some of his body English on the sideline when he wasn't playing. A young man whose father is the all-time leading receiver at Rutgers. And it was really a, a Butch Jones recruit. Butch Jones was on that staff at Rutgers as a GA with Garantano's father. And I think there were a lot of questions about Garantano coming into this season. Is this guy the kind of guy you can bank on for the next few years in the SEC? I think he's proved a lot of the doubters wrong thus far. He has. His body language this season has been fantastic. We talked to Jeremy Pruitt about it. He said this has become the leader of our football team. On third down, going end zone, leaping catch. Touchdown, Josh Palmer. <laughs> Another fantastic throw right here by Jared Garantano. We talked about Josh Palmer in the open. Probably their speed threat receiver, but he gets his one-on-one -on -one matchup. And watch this textbook back shoulder throw. Puts it right on the back shoulder. And a nice job by Josh Palmer right there of elevating. And you see Jared Garantano calm, cool, and collected with the low-key celebration. I'm loving it. Jared Garantano lighting up the scoreboard on that drive. Ninth touchdown pass of the year for Garantano. And Josh Palmer who made his way to St. Thomas Aquinas High School by way of Ontario, Canada, his second touchdown reception of the year. Yeah, he's the guy who's, who's kind of emerged for them as, as their deep threat, their go guy. You know, I mean, they, they really have Callaway and Jawan Jennings who are really more possession receivers, don't have elite speed. I think they really want Josh Palmer to continue to develop. That speed is important at the wide receiver position. You see right there as a perfect back shoulder throw for a nice touchdown. Meanwhile, Garantano has thrown 111 passes without an interception as he continues to be accurate and overall mistake-free. Want to give him a try? Yeah. Couple of touchdowns here in the first quarter for the Volunteers and a happy Josh Palmer, the sophomore wideout. Tennessee is going to be recruiting a lot of playmakers in the future. If there's one thing Jeremy Pruitt has a reputation of doing, in addition to knowing defense, he knows how to recruit. He absolutely knows how to recruit. And speaking of, of playmakers, did you see that foot speed right there by our colleague, Laura Rutledge? Oh, there's no question. What an athlete. She's a 4-4 gal. Good coverage that time on special teams by Tennessee. A modest 15-yard return. Jared Pruitt talked to us. He said one of the strengths of our team this year has been special teams, and he almost seemed a little surprised by it. He said we don't have a ton of speed, a ton of guys who are really hitters on our team. But for whatever reason, they've been extremely effective so far on special teams, both in the return game and defending against the returns. Yeah, he said we don't have a whole lot of runners and hitters, and somehow we're getting it done on special teams. And for a Tennessee team that very often in the SEC has been overmatched offensively and defensively, they need good special teams play. Charlotte needs something good to happen on this drive. They have dug themselves into an early 14-0 deficit. <laughs> Delay a game right here against Charlotte. Delay a game offense number 16. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's, that's been one of the changes this year in college football is they want to keep this game moving, right? There used to be these little one to two minute breaks after change of possession, maybe after a touchdown like that. They want to keep the game moving and teams still, it seems like, are not prepared for that mm. occasionally. That's already four penalties for 20 yards now on the 49ers. <laughs> First and 15, Sheriffs rolling out, throws low, still scooped up at the 15 
And down to the 19 is the tight end, R.J. Tyler, the senior. Quarter number one in the books. All volunteers, Tennessee 14, Charlotte nothing. Homecoming here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Brad Lambert pacing the sidelines, wondering if his 49ers can get something going here. Tough start. Mentioned Coach Lambert, the only coach in the history of Charlotte. They started football back in 2013. They've been FBS since 2015. They are in the Conference USA, very much a team that could be eligible for a bowl if they pick up a couple of more victories. It's the third time they've played a Power 5 school. They played Kentucky a couple of years ago and lost. Looking for their first win against a Power 5 program. And distinguished alums, how about Cedric Cornbread Maxwell, the <laughs> basketball fans? Don't forget Larry Ogunjobi if you're a Browns fan, third round draft. Pick. Very true. And I know you're a big Clay Aiken fan of uh, American Idol fame. He also is a Charlotte grad. I was more of a Ruben Sutter guy. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll allow Clay Aiken. There's no need to choose when you have that much talent in one room. <laughs> Third down and three now for Charlotte. 49ers one of three on third down. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit earlier. This is where Tennessee wants to improve. Again, 11th out of 14 teams in the SEC on third down. Haven't been good. And a big reason is they haven't been able to get consistent pressure with those guys up front. And we'll go on the ground. Try to run it wide. No chance. Calvin Camp. Tracked down by Darren Kirkland, the outside linebacker. Yeah, Darren Kirkland, a guy coming off an injury, lost all last season. But a nice job right there coming off and chasing it down on the edge. He's, he's been playing better as of late. These linebackers are improving with Kirkland and Batuli. Again, though, the concern with Tennessee's defense, the, the, the first 11 really are, are pretty solid players. But after that, the depth is a huge question mark. Now Marquez Callaway took the last one to the house. He's back to receive this punt from Kyle Corbett. Rugby's another one. End over end. Callaway will let it bounce and let it roll and let it die at the 30. Volunteers, football, we come back. The first half, guys. Dari, thank you much. Obviously, it's a huge game for Kentucky. Some calling it the biggest in Kentucky football history. That defense has been very stout all year long, Barrett, but this Georgia offense coming in with a lot to play for. Yeah, I think Jake Fromm last week kind of reestablished himself as the guy. You know, there was some question. Justin Fields was playing a little bit. I think the coaching staff got together and said, let's empower Jake Fromm to kind of take over this team and become the guy. And since then, he's been playing at a high level. And you lose Chubb and Michelle, and then you still got guys like DeAndre Swift and Holyfield. And it's an embarrassment of riches with the Georgia Bulldog backfield over the years. Yeah, Tennessee here's got to get something going in the run game. So far, I think that's seven carries for negative three yards. That's not the way you want to run the football in any game, but particularly in a game when you're playing against an inferior opponent. And most of that on the offensive line as well. All of it's on the offensive line. Again, I think they have some good backs. I like Ty Chandler a lot, but these guys aren't having a chance. They're getting hit in the backfield. And part of that comes from sacks, but still, it's it's been ugly so far for the O-line. Jet sweep here and turn in the corner. That is Phil Zemi, Carlin Phil Zemi, who scored a touchdown last week against South Carolina. Yeah, watch the block right here by the tight end, Eli Wolf. It's just your classic jet sweep. Everybody's running it these days, a little end around. A nice job right there, getting to the outside shoulder, pinning that linebacker right there. He's called the force player. That linebacker's job is to force that uh, end around guy back inside to where all, all, all his defenders are. Doesn't do that job because of the fantastic block by Eli Wolf. Eli Wolf, their most reliable tight end. A redshirt junior. And a Minster, Ohio. Again, nothing doing on the ground. I mean, they just cannot find an inch of daylight. That's going to be a loss of one. Yeah, you really get the, the sense, you know, when, when you watch this and you watch the way Tyson Helton calls these plays he's almost having to call plays around this offensive line you'll see a lot of screens a lot of perimeter runs a lot of perimeter throws a lot of ends around you know when you call plays like that it's because you don't believe your offensive line can really get you many yards and that's what we've seen anytime they've tried the interior of this defense they haven't gone anywhere Tyson Hilton 
offensive coordinator. Of course, you know his brother, the head coach at Southern Cal, his father, Kim Hilton, longtime coach at the University of Houston. I believe they got a good one in Tyson Helton, but it's hard to draw up plays when you're not blocking anybody. Yeah, and Tyson Helton, he's a, he's a guy who's honestly been criticized by the Tennessee fan base this year. I think I broke down a ton of film in Tennessee this week. I think he's done a fantastic job, honestly. Yeah. Uh, his game plan last week against South Carolina was genius to me. I thought uh, he, he really called a heck of a game, and I think he's gotten better and better. But, but again, the personnel that he's dealing with, particularly along the offensive line just limits him so much. He I got, think he wants to call more deep balls for Garantano. Sure. He can't do it because he doesn't have the protection. Garantano's got the arm. They say he's got a very accurate deep ball, but he rarely has time to throw it. These are the kind of throws you typically yep. see. Penalty flag back near the line of scrimmage. And that's in the area of illegal formation right there. But again, that's it, you see so many quick throws and you might wonder, man, why will he not throw the ball down the field? Trust me, we talked to him. He wants to throw the sure. ball down the field. You know, he, he comes from a system where he threw the ball down the field a lot. The illegal formation, number 51, offense. A penalty is declined, fourth down. And the right tackle, Drew Richmond, and Tennessee will have to punt. Yeah, Co Coach Helton actually Coach Sam Darnold at Southern Cal. Right. You can call a lot more deep plays when you got the number one or first round no draft pick. <laughs> In this situation, when you have no protection, you got a young man who's still learning his way. You don't have any wide receivers with a ton of speed. Yeah, right, you don't have a burner on the outside. I mean, you're very limited at what you can call. Joe Doyle has been outstanding punting the football this year. And that nearly could have been perfect. It'll stand as a 60-yarder. Charlotte football when we come back. And we'll keep it right here as a penalty flag is back at the 33-yard line. This is something we, I would love to see as a fan here of college football, just speeding up these yes. calls. In the communication, that's why they have the headsets. After the play, personal foul, receiving team number 15. Half the distance to the goal, first down. It's Marquavis Gibbs on the penalty. Charlotte football, and we come back. Eight Manning guys. How about that, Dari? And by the way, Albert O at Missouri a couple weeks ago in Columbia. That is a guy who's going to be playing a lot on Sunday at tight end. They've got high draft picks on both sides of the they ball do. at Mizzou. That is not a team devoid of talent, but they're still looking for their first conference win. Yeah, I think a lot of Tennessee fans might point to the hire of the offensive coordinator in the offseason at Derek Dooley. He hasn't really done much with that offense this year with a heck of a player in Drew Locke. Derek Dooley, of course, part of that triumvirate that followed Phil Fulmer here, Lane Kiffin, Derek Dooley, and of course, Butch Jones. And needless to say, it's, it's been a tough decade or so of college football for Tennessee but was once a not only an SEC power a national power yeah, this is a proud program but you know I think the positive is you get the sense around here that it's a there's a new day right it's a new day and people are excited about the discipline and the intensity that Jeremy Pruitt has brought to this this facility last SEC championship for Tennessee came in 19 98 the last Eastern Division title in 2007 of course they won a national title in 1998. The T. Martin orchestrated all that is now the athletic director here. T. Martin's calling plays over That's there right. on the left coast. Speaking of T. But I'm with you. I think I think Jeremy Pruitt is a good fit. I do too. And, and I think at some point there's just too much going for this program to not bounce back. I agree. A tough yeah. stretch. Look, it's a great place. They've got so much tradition here. It's a proud program. There are a lot of fans who love this university. I think Jeremy Pruitt's the guy to get this program turned in the right direction. Third down and four. Here comes the blitz. Screen set up. And weaving his way back to the 18. A couple yards shy. Charlotte's Rico Arnold, who's been busy today. Yeah, good call right here by the offensive coordinator of Charlotte. Calling the screen with the pressure, but got, got just enough pressure on Sheriffs to affect that arm. But then watch the chase right here. The chase, you're, as a defensive lineman, you're taught you got to turn and run when that ball is thrown. Turn and run. And a great job, good effort and energy right here. That's what I've seen all over the tape on both sides of the football with this Jeremy Pruitt coach team is effort and energy. These guys are playing uh, with a lot of heart, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. That, that, that has never been in question all season for these volunteers. And he was quick to point out to us that 
Liverpool. Loves the effort and energy of these kids all year long. That is a boy. That looks like me off the tee box. <laughs> I, I, I want to say I've I've had some drives like that. <laughs> Scold them yes, off the tee. I do that often. As a matter of fact, that is a 32-yard punt that went about 12 inches off the ground. Well, we, we mentioned Phil Fulmer, of course, legendary career as a player and coach here. After that, Lane Kiffin, one and done, seven and six, kind of left the program in a little bit of peril. Derek Dooley. Did not do very well. Six games under 500, which Jones was a hot name at the time, but could not turn the corner either. And so last season was tumultuous around here. The coaching search, well documented, was not exactly a smooth one. It was not. But, but, they, but I think they came out great. Yes. I, I really do. I think Jeremy Pruitt's the right man for the job. Garantano actually had time and goes underneath. That might have been one where he could have gone downfield. I was about to say he had Dominic Wood Anderson running wide open in the middle of the field for whatever reason could not see his big tight end. Keep an eye right here on Dominic Wood Anderson. See him coming right here across the screen. We got him wide open right there. Can't hit him but that's that's you know he's taking care of the football again but I, I think Tyson Helton would like to see him maybe take some right. more chances in situations. Well like that's that. one of those when you get hit so much you hear footsteps even right. when they're not there. Exactly. Take a little more time. Hit your man right there. That's 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 probably the first read on that play too. Jeremy Banks, the freshman of the backfield. They'll fake it to him, go end around, and Charlotte has it bottled up. No chance for Josh Palmer, who will be dropped for a loss. Again, we sound like a broken record here, Mike, but but that's why you see so many end arounds, right? So many end arounds, so many screens, quick passes, because you can't run the football up the middle. Uh, just you know eventually they're not going to they're not going to buy the run if you don't do it enough up the middle see right there a good job by the 49ers defense rallying for that group tackle and that's what you got to do when you're a, a little undermanned talent wise like the 49ers are you got to you got to tackle you got to gang tackle it's the fifth tackle for loss for Charlotte on defense who comes in as one of the top rush defenses in the country Pressure on the backside and a perfect strike. Garantano to Palmer. That is not an easy throw, and he puts it right on the money. Again, that's the arm talent we talked about in the open. A fantastic throw. That, that ball was probably in the air for 35 to 40 yards all the way across the field. That's a big league throw. If you can give this guy time, he can make plays. It is going to be just short of the marker by a couple of yards. So Tennessee will punt it away. Bottle bomb back to receive for Charlotte. Charlotte's keeping the defense on the field here. Where the fake? Joe Doyle has pinned opponents inside the 20 17 times this year. Make it 18. He has been a heck of a weapon for the Volunteers this season. 6-15 to play, first half. Volunteers up 14-0. Now there is Trey Smith, easily the most talented offensive lineman on the Tennessee squad, the former consensus number one recruit in the country out of Jackson, Tennessee. And unfortunately, bad news coming recently. Blood clots in his lungs are going to be keeping him out for a while, possibly the rest of this season. And they sorely miss what that young man can do. Well, they absolutely do. We've talked about the offensive line a lot today. This guy is a heck of a football player. I loved breaking down tape of him this week. He's got all the skill in the world. So much power in that body. Just a, a powerful guy who finishes and has a great effort and attitude. To the ground on first down and squeezing out three is LeMay. LeMay. Yeah, guys, Trey Smith is definitely someone that this team is missing, but he is making sure to stay involved in any way that he can. Specifically today with it being homecoming, he is over here encouraging his teammates. He's definitely someone that matters to this team, and he's making sure everyone keeps their spirits up, they're playing hard, and they play for him. Taylor, good point. I mean, you want leadership out of your best players, and he's a guy that provides that as well for this Tennessee squad. You, know, you put him back on the line, you know they're going to get recruits. One thing Jeremy Pruitt was yep. so optimistic about with us in our meetings with him yesterday, he already loves the recruiting class he's got coming in. Remember now, you can sign these kids in December, so we're not that far off from the initial national signing day, and Tennessee expects to have a good class. Yeah, they do. I think they, they feel like help's on the way, right? If there are some guys here who you know fit in this program, but there's a lot of gaping holes here, particularly depth-wise in this program and Jeremy Pruitt wants guys who love to play the game and who play with a lot of passion and energy and Trey Smith is one of those guys man watching him on tape 
Again, so much passion and energy. I know he's hating not to be out here with his teammates. Charlotte, one of five on third down. This is third and three. Sheriffs delivers, and it's caught at the 30. Late penalty flag. Rico Arnold again, who's been a heavy target here in this first half. 17 yards for the freshman. Yeah, there is a flag down. I wonder if they're going to get Rico Arnold on the OPI, possibly. It's either going to be pass interference on the offense or defense. Looks like kind of some contact by both guys. See which way they call it. Holding defense number 20. The penalty is declined. First down. It's on Bryce Thompson, the freshman out of Dutch Fork High School in South Carolina. Yeah, good route right here by Rico Arnold. Doesn't look much like a freshman. Fantastic get off as the back shoulder. A nice throw and catch right there. Doing a nice job stepping in the day. Already a few catches for him on the day with their leading receiver, Victor Tucker, out with an injury. 17 yards, a first down. Balls parked at the 34 yard line. Play action. Looking for somebody deep downfield. Instead, we'll go underneath at the 45 into plus territory. That is Kofa, the senior wideout. I thought he was going to go deep on this one, but instead goes underneath. Well, that's who this team is. They run, 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 and they set up these play action passes. A great job in protection right there by the 49ers offensive line. Has a little out route right there by Kofa. Does a nice job. The, the deep route, he wanted to throw the deep route, like you said, Mike. Did a good job of having the self-control to check it down, pick up solid yardage. 28 yards on the play. Some rare good field position for the 49ers offense. LeMay wiggles and is stopped after a pickup of three. And Tennessee, so far in this game, done a pretty nice job bottling up LeMay. He hasn't gotten loose yet. We talked about it as several games this year where he's over 100 rushing yards but they've, they've given up a few plays in the past game so far again we talked about the fact they they're extremely young in the secondary we know they already lost Alante Taylor probably their best freshman corner to targeting earlier in this game back to the ground on second down LeMay with a head of steam barreling his way forward inside the 25 and down to the 23-yard line before Batuli stops him after a 12-yard game. Yeah, Benny LeMay must have heard me talking. A great job right here by this offensive line. That's just a, a zone play to the right. You see the whole line moving in concert to the right. A great cutback right there by Benny LeMay, sticking that foot in the ground. That's what you want when you're a good zone runner. You stick that right foot in the ground, you find your cutback lane, and you get north and south. That's what makes Benny LeMay so special. Players love him. His teammates love him. He was voted team captain as a junior out of Matthews, North Carolina, Butler High School. Uh-oh, trick play. Quarterback's in motion. A wildcat here. And they'll run it to the left side. And not much there. <laughs> but Tully read it all the way, the linebacker. Yeah, well, it was a, a lot of window dressing on that. <laughs> what ended up... Yeah, watch, uh, watch Sheriffs right here go in motion, gets out of there, tries to draw someone out of the box with him. I don't think it worked. I don't think he was, it was really much of a threat because they actually didn't cover him. It's to, that's the thing is when the quarterback goes out, sometimes they just don't even cover him. They just dare you to throw the ball out there. McAllister, the lone back on second down. They'll feed him. And McAllister wrapped down for a loss on the play by Kyle Phillips. Kyle Phillips has been awfully active in he this has. first half. He's had a great game so far today. Several. Uh, batted passes and now getting involved in the run game and again we talked about the seniors on this football team there's really four seniors on this defensive line and Johnson Tuttle Bain and Phillips who are all pretty good players uh, and, and they really have played solid for this Tennessee football team under two minutes to go first half and a big third down and nine here for Charlotte here comes the blitz sheriffs Going deep down the sideline. There's the penalty yeah. flag. Interference there. There was a lot of contact. It was intended for Kofa. Buchanan was on the cover. No, that's going to be Osborne, rather, on the coverage, and he clearly pushed off. Yeah, I get that you want to get body position, right? I mean, you want to get body position when the ball's in the air. That's just too much contact right there. It's, that's a, 
uh, you, you got to, when the ball's in the air, you got to let the receiver have a chance to catch the ball, and Marco Osborne did not do that. Pass interference, defense, number three, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Now watch Osborne here. He's in, he's in great position, really. He doesn't need to do this. But when you knock the man off the route like that, and I think it happened maybe a little bit before a replay cut in, but when you knock the man off the route, it's an easy call for the referee. You're in great position. No need to push that right arm out and make that contact. You almost force the referee to make that call in that situation. Ninth play of the drive. And the best scoring opportunity of the day for Charlotte. First down and goal. Stuffed. No gain. Emmett Gooden of last chance you fame on the tackle. <laughs> yeah, great penetration right here by Emmett Gooden getting in the backfield and making a play again. Other than that one play about two plays ago, Benny LeMay has been bottled up in the line of scrimmage. You got to give these Tennessee defenders a lot of credit because uh, this team comes in as one of the most effective rush offenses really in college football. And Tennessee's defensive line is standing tall so far. Second down and goal. Clock ticking away under a minute to go first half. And Some a timeout confusion. call. You can hear from the Tennessee sideline one of the coaches screaming timeout. We'll take it with them. All right, we will see you shortly for the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Dory, Dory, and Chiz will show you what's going on in Lexington. Battle for the East title. Big win for Auburn. We'll preview Bama LSU. What do you see with Tennessee? It's the same thing we've seen all year. Their offensive line, not very good. Two yards rushing, not good enough against Charlotte. Well, defense is getting run on, too. Yeah. 14-0. Big chance for the defense. Guys, thank you very much. And there's no question, Tennessee has once again struggled to run the football. The offensive line has been a bit of an issue. And Charlotte has a chance to make this a very competitive game here if they can score on a second down and goal. LeMay gets the snap and burrows inside the five. Yep. Buchanan and Batuli on the stop. That's the second time today we've seen that Wildcat formation with the quarterback going in motion. That time Tennessee did motion a man out of the backfield uh, with the quarterback. And LeMay had a little bit of running room in there. But again, a nice job. Looks like Charlotte right here is going to get a timeout with the clock winding down. That's exactly what they're going to do as they get ready for a third and goal. Pretty critical it is. drive here for Charlotte. Yeah, I mean, three points is nice, but if you could somehow make this a 14-7 game, you're feeling really good. It, it, it absolutely. It's a game right now. I mean, it's, Tennessee came in here kind of expecting this to be a football game. I think they had the right mentality around the facility. Look, they watched the tape, and, you know, the talent level, obviously, Tennessee has a little more talent, but it's not, it, the gap is not that vast, right? Uh, between these talent levels and obviously got a big play on special teams early in the game that kind of set the pace for this game and it's kind of covered up really some of the mistakes and like like Dory mentioned in studio and Chris Doring only two yards rushing yeah. right when you're playing a non-SEC team you can't you got to run the football better than that and we've talked about the importance of this game and the rest of the year Tennessee needs to win three out of four to be bowl eligible. Technically, you could get into a bowl game at five and seven, depending on a whole myriad of factors. But they don't want to sweat that one out. Charlotte doesn't want to sweat a field goal out. They want a touchdown here on third and goal. Fake the run, pass over the middle, and that ball is airmailed, intended for the tight end, Chris Phillips. But he would have had to have been minute bowl to reel that one in. Yeah, that was that was an interesting throw right there. Had actually might have had his man right there. A good play call, but that ball looked like it almost slipped out of his head. He threw that ball literally through the uprights, Mike Morgan. That was uh, that was not a great throw right there by Sheriffs. Well-designed play by Charlotte. And a good throw gets you six points. Instead, it'll be Jonathan Cruz, who's been very good this year, 12 for 17. I mentioned Big last year was a nightmare kicking the football for Charlotte. The worst in Division timeout, One. Tennessee, their second of the first half. 30-second timeout. This might be the longest final minute of the first <laughs> half in college football history. I think Tennessee might have had the wrong personnel on the field. I wonder if they saw something where they might have thought it could have possibly been a fake, right? I mean, they're, they are only on the four-yard line. I think Tennessee didn't want to take any chances here to give up a touchdown. Jeremy Pruitt says, I can't take the timeouts with me to half. Might as well 
take some time to talk about it. You know, watching this team, th there's no doubt, Mike, who, th who the defensive coordinator is, right? Right. It, I, don't, I don't know what it says on paper, but yeah. I'll tell you, Jeremy Pruitt is the defensive coordinator. You watch him, he is involved. He's running down the sideline. He's yelling at guys. He's adjusting. He looks just like he did last year on the sidelines of Alabama. Uh, when the defense is on the field. So he, he make no mistake, he's in the meetings every day. He's getting after this defense. Of course, a former coordinator, Bama, Georgia, FSU. That field goal is on the way, and it sneaks through just inside the left upright. Yeah, you might have you might have seen right there, right at the end of the play, three guys snuck out of that field goal uh, to just make sure they were actually going to kick it. Uh, you know, did not want to risk giving up the seven points. And I, I wonder if they had a fake on. Maybe Jeremy Pruitt saw something in his film study that was a little irregular. They could have had a fake on, but changed the fake. Now kept it at three points instead of seven. Yeah, watch right here. Just, just watch the adjustment Jeremy Pruitt made. You're going to see three guys right here back out just at the very end just to make sure there's no funny business going on. And I bet you that's why Jeremy Pruitt took that timeout and a good adjustment right there. That is a good news, bad news for Charlotte. 12 play, 87 yard drive. You got to feel good about that, but then you have to settle for three as the drive stalls inside the five yard line. Well, and they've really dominated time of possession in this first half. It's about 18 to 12. Time of possession, 18 minutes. Charlotte's had the ball. I know there was a special teams touchdown, so that kind of strays those numbers a little bit, but Charlotte has had the ball seemingly for this whole first half. And the kickoff goes out of bounds, so that'll be a penalty. I don't know if Tennessee is going to be overly ambitious here, though. Might just yep. be content going to the locker room <laughs> up by 11. Yeah, that was an interesting decision to kick that one out of bounds, though. Surely he. Free kick out of bounds, Char Charlotte, number 11. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. Yeah, but surely this will just be a knee here the Tennessee Volunteers. But again, look at Charlotte right here this season, third in FBS in time possession. They average having the ball for 36 minutes a game. That's a lot of time possession. We talked about how effective they are at running the football. And so far, they're right on pace here with already 18 minutes in this first half. Fans <laughs> not happy about the knee, but then Come on, again, guys. Come on. Come on. What do you want? A Hail Mary? Come on. You're Just up 14-3, take it in the half. Take it and try and perform a little bit better, particularly on offense in half number two. We'll see if this Tennessee offense can come to life in the second half. As it is, they'll settle for a 14-3 lead at the half. We hope to hear from head coach Jeremy Pruitt in just a moment. And standing by with Coach Pruitt now is Taylor Davis. Coach, this week you wanted to see tough, disciplined football. What were your biggest takeaways from the first half? You know, we, we, we had a couple of penalties on offense by not lining up correctly. Uh, you know, it's funny, the same guys keep showing up, so that's on us. We got we got to either coach them or replace them. Um, you know, and we've had way too many negative yards. Can't, can't run the football. Your quarterback, Jarrett Garantano, really proving himself in toughness again. You say you ask a lot of him. What more do you need to see in the second? Well, he missed a couple of throws there in the first half. He's got to get the ball out of his hand faster. Thank you, Coach. Now, good news, bad news, guys. Back in studio, Tennessee up, but 11 rushes and zero yards on the ground. We'll let you guys chew on that. Well, I think the good news is here, with all due respect to Charlotte, that they're playing Charlotte. Halftime score, Tennessee leading Charlotte 14 to three. Volunteers, zero yards rushing. Hoping to have a better performance in half number two as we welcome you back inside the booth here at Neyland Stadium. Mike working with the All-American from Alabama, Barrett Jones. And Barrett, bad news, good news if you're Tennessee. Obviously, you always want to have a lead. That's good. And Jared Garantano looked awfully good. The rushing offense, not so good. But let's go back to Garantano because he's the focal point of the offense and he continues to impress. He absolutely, he's continued to improve. And look, we talked about it in the open. The guy takes a lot of hits, right? This offensive line has been extremely porous. You saw it early. They, they got to Garantano in the first position, laid a, laid a big lick right, right in the ribs as he completed a big third down pass. But here's what you love about him. He settles down, uses that arm talent. Look at this dime right here to his big tight end. And then has his matchup one-on-one -on -one with Jordan Palmer, a perfect back shoulder throw to that right corner of the end zone and the quiet little fist bump right there. I, I like the confidence this kid's playing with. You see his first half numbers there, eight for 10, 93 yards, seven for his last seven. 
He's done a good job. Even though he missed a few throws in that first half, he's been very accurate, has taken good care of the football. If they can give this guy time, he's going to make plays down the field. That is the question, though, Mike. They have not been able to give Garantano time to make those plays. Yeah, they haven't provided any holes for that running game either. If you're Ty Chandler, Tim Jordan and company, you got to be asking, when, when, are we able gonna, when are we going to be able to see a, an ounce of daylight going through those holes in the line of scrimmage? There haven't been many. And Charlotte has been salty on defense. 14-3 game. Charlotte will get the football first here in half number two. Aaron McAllister back to receive the kick. And it will be out of the end zone. Charlotte will start things off at the 25 as we check back in with Taylor Davis. Yeah, guys, I spoke with Charlotte coach Lambert after the half. He said he's really proud of what they did in the first half, especially defensively. He said their focus was to stop the run, and that's exactly what they did. He said the last drive right before the half gave them a lot of momentum. Guys were hyped up in the locker room. He said he wants to see that continue now. And offensively, he said they've got to find ways to pass the ball downfield. Evan Sheriffs has got to get rid of the ball quicker. He's looking for a more explosive offense in this half, guys. I would say both offenses would be looking for that, Taylor. Neither offense really yep. got a ton going. Yeah, keep in mind, in this, is a, this is a different game, if not for that special team's touchdown Absolutely. by Marcus Callaway. Yeah. For those of you just tuning in, Marcus Callaway took a punt return early in this game for six, and that's made this scoreline look a lot better than it really is. Yeah, it would have been seven to three. And Charlotte. Trying to squeeze out a yard on first down with Benny LeMay. Alexis Johnson in on the stop for Tennessee. Well, nice job so far uh, bottling up Benny LeMay. We talked about Benny LeMay coming into this football game. He's kind of their bell cow. He's the guy they want to look to get the football to. Both teams have really stopped the run pretty effectively. So we got a Charlotte player down. That's Chris Brown, the right guard. The Charlotte football program. It's only been playing football for six years now. I'm going to give them credit. They've already become competitive in Conference USA. Brad Lambert has been the coach throughout. Two new coordinators this year. They're hoping for a couple more wins, and then they'd be bowl eligible, and that would be a, a landmark event for this program. Yeah, you got the feeling talking to these coaches that they feel like they have things headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. A disastrous season two years ago, 1-11. But, but they've, got, they've, they've got some momentum here, and you mentioned it. If they could make a bowl game, that would be absolutely huge for this program. And of course, that's in the crosshairs for Tennessee as well. They've got a little more work to do. They're looking for win number four, so technically need three more wins to become bowl eligible. Yep. Another penalty flag. We have had several. It's been a sloppy game thus far. And we talked to Coach. Ball start, offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, second down. We talked to Coach Pruitt about the importance of playing in a bowl game. And, you know, he talked to us about, obviously, the kids love playing in a bowl game. It's fun for them. But another thing that maybe people don't think about is you get 15 extra practices, right? When you have a young team like this, particularly how young they are offensively, practices are important. Sure. And, and he does not want to miss out on the opportunity to have those 15 extra practices with his kids. It's invaluable for this program right now to get that extra practice time. Second and long. Sheriffs goes underneath. Little swing pass. And that'll pick up about five, maybe six for Benny LeMay. Todd Kelly who get, got a start today in favor of the injured Micah Abernathy, who's out with a broken collarbone. Yeah, Todd Kelly's played a lot of football around here and does a nice job one-on-one -on -one in space with Charlotte's best player making that tackle to set up an important third down here. If you're Tennessee, you want to come out, get a three and out, get the football back, kind of start to impose your will a little bit on a Conference USA opponent. An obvious passing down for Evan Sheriffs. He hasn't been able to get much going through the air. They go five wide. Empty backfield. Tennessee brings four. And a wide open target over the middle. That'll be a first down and then some. Out to the 46 is Mark Quattlebaum. Yeah. 18 yards. Yeah, great job right here by Mark Quattlebaum. He's on the right side of your screen. Look at that route right here. A little shake route. 
really gets the Tennessee defender, uh, number 28, Balaam Buchanan, to bite on that shake route. That's a beautiful route right there by Quattlebaum. That's exactly how you draw it up. A nice job by Sheriffs waiting on that route to develop. But that's what you get when you're an empty, right? You got one-on-one -on -one protection all around the field. Couldn't hold up if you're Tennessee there. It's a ninth first down for Charlotte, Tennessee, with just five thus far between the tackles. And a run up the middle for Benny LeMay. Six more yards for the junior out of Matthews, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte, Butler High School. And we talked again about the depth of this Tennessee defense. They really have four senior defensive linemen up front. But after those guys, there's really the cupboard's pretty bare, right? There's not much depth on this team. 18-minute time possession this first half, right? So keep an eye on these Tennessee defenders. They've done a nice job bottling up the run so far, but let's see if they get tired in the second half. Again, inside run, and this time Tennessee has it bottled up. No gain on the play. Nose guard Shy Tuttle there to meet him. Yeah, no, no fatigue shown there right there. Shy Tuttle and Amit Gooden both did a great job of getting penetration in the backfield. And that's, if you want to disrupt a run game, you've got to find a way to get penetration in the backfield. When a good runner can't really uh, take his time to have his reads and make his first cut, he's oftentimes ineffective. Charlotte three for eight on third down. It'll be third down and five. Four man rush passes incomplete. That looked like Rico Arnold and Evan Sheriffs were on different pages. Sure did. They were on vastly different pages. Let's take one more look at the punt return by Marquez Callaway. That really is a big reason for the score. We talked about it. A bad punt right here by Kyle Corbett. He's supposed to punt it to the right sideline, punts it left, and Marquez Callaway does the rest. Makes one man miss and turns it into six points for his first touchdown of the season. He's dangerous back there, and I'm sure Kyle Corbett got an earful on the sideline. Talking about placing that punt where your protection's going. And not only was it placed in the wrong spot, it also had about a second and a half of <laughs> hang time, so you had no yeah. chance for your coverage team to get down there. <laughs> Tennessee will take over when we come back. A 50-yard punt that time. Volunteers still lead it. Monday at 7 Eastern on the SEC Network, it's Thinking Out Loud. With Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears, he'll talk football and want your participation via social media throughout the show. Also, streaming live on the ESPN app. You know a thing or two about Greg McElroy, Mr. Jones? Yeah, un unfortunately, Mike, I, I protected that guy for uh, two years, and so I got a lot of opportunities to hear him think out loud in yes. my direction. Yeah. He, uh, he he wanted the protection. He was a very meticulous quarterback. So <laughs> Greg thinks out loud a lot. No, it's a great show, actually. They do a, a fantastic job, and good to have a uh, fellow colleague. Tim Jordan in the game at running back. Garantano running for his life, and the pass is dropped by Jordan. That one is right in the hands of Tim Jordan. And that's where they miss Ty Chandler right there. Ty Chandler it, it is playing today, but he hasn't played much. They said he was a little banged up. They were a little vague on kind of what his injury was. But he's a much better receiver out of the backfield on tape than Tim Jordan is. Tim Jordan has done a nice job this year, kind of between the tackles. But Ty Chandler is a, a weapon in the passing game. Both those backs just sophomores and will comprise of the veteran backfield next year as juniors. Again to the ground game, and again, not much there. That's been the story all game long for Tennessee. They simply cannot get a rushing game going against Charlotte today. So a third down and 10 for the Volunteers. We have not heard from Jawan Jennings no, we have not. in this game. The other talented wide receiver, Marquez Callaway, has been busy. Three man rush. Arantano should have time. He does, and it's perfect. Right on the mark to the tight end, Dominic Wood Anderson, who they believe is an NFL talent. Yeah, he's a guy who's really emerging. He's a big target. We saw him make a big play down the left sideline earlier in this football game. And again, Garantano puts it right on the four. 
of Dominic Wood Anderson. A nice throw and catch right there on a big third down. But look, they keep putting themselves in these situations, Mike, where they can't pick up any positive gains on first and second down and putting themselves in so many third and longs because, again, I hate to sound like a broken record, this offensive line cannot get any push up front. Jeremy Banks in the backfield. Flea flicker. Garantano pummeled as he throws. It's going to be caught anyway. It took forever to get down, but wide open was Josh Palmer. Garantano back up in pain on a beautiful 45-yard play. Uh, so much to talk about here, Mike. That, first of all, it's an extremely ill-advised throw. Uh, he, no one's open. Uh, thankfully, the defensive back falls down right there, uh, and Josh Palmer has time to juggle it three times while making the catch. But watch the pressure. Again, it's a flea flicker. You should have... Plenty of time, man, that's a, oh, that's, that hurts just to watch. A shot in the ribs, and now we got Josh Palmer down. We got Vols down all over the field. He was limping and he dropped, but you can't say enough about the, the toughness of Garantano. Again, making another play downfield. There's a lot to digest on that play, and we'll do that as we step aside. Dari, thank you much. See if Kentucky can make that interesting in the fourth quarter. The most hyped up football game in Kentucky in a long, long time. And Georgia trying to remind everybody, hey, we're still one of the top teams in the country after that humbling loss a few weeks ago in Baton Rouge. After a bizarre flea flicker play for a first down, Tennessee back on the field. Garantano hands it off out of the eye and plowing ahead. <laughs> With a head of steam that time and roll on the tackle. Let's take one more look at this flea flicker right here. Watch how long this ball hangs up in the air. We actually timed it. It was 4.1 seconds, Mike. That's like a punt. That's longer than most punts. It's about twice as long as the rugby style punts we've seen so far <laughs> in this game. 4.1 seconds. Thankfully, the defensive back, Anthony Butler, fell down right there to get, give Chandler, uh, Josh Palmer, a, ch a chance to catch that one. Of course, another play where Garantano takes a hit as he throws. It's gotten to the point where he's probably surprised when he's not hit yeah. on a pass attempt. I think you got to get this guy some Kevlar rib protectors, <laughs> something because he uh, he needs them. Third down and two here as the clock ticks away, nearing the eight-minute mark of the third quarter. That's a big, another big third down here for Tennessee. You want to find a way to get seven. Start to get this game out of reach and get a little cushion. Jeremy Banks, the freshman tailback. Got to throw it here, I think. Dots the eye. And he gets it. Left side. No, sir. That'll be a loss on the play. Alex Highsmith from his defensive end spot read it and stopped him for a loss of one. I, I tried to tell him, Mike, this offensive I line heard you. hasn't got any push all game. They tried the toss play. But just, I mean, you, you, there are four different guys in the backfield that could have made that play. And again, I don't want to be overly critical of this offensive line. I'm not trying to harp on them and beat them up. It's just been extremely poor play that's holding this offense back from those guys up front. Six tackles for loss for Charlotte to kind of amplify your point. Sabaglia on to attempt a 33-yarder. And that is wide. No good. The drive turns up nothing. Charlotte football when we come back. 7-13 to go, third quarter in Knoxville. Fourteen three Tennessee on top of Charlotte and a game in which Tennessee has managed to get very little on the ground. Why so Barry Jones? Yeah, let's take a look at this play right here. Watch watch the right tackle Drew Richmond right here on this toss play. You got to find a way to cut off the backside right here. Kind of comes lazy out of his stance. Doesn't cut. That's just that's football 101 right there. You got to open up and either get on the ground and dive at that guy's knees to try to cut him off, or use enough speed to get in front of him. But that's that's what's been the characteristic of this team all year. They just turn guys loose up front. Seven rushing yards for Tennessee in this game. Seven. Charlotte continues to have issues throwing the football. It was Will Ignat on the pressure of Evan Sheriffs. Sheriffs has taken a few hits of his own. He has, and you know what, so far in this game, I, I would give the Tennessee defense a, a, de a decent grade. I think they've done a fine job. Obviously, 
They've allowed a few plays here and there to, to allow Charlotte to possess the ball for a long time. But overall, they've gotten off the field on several third downs, and they've gotten pressure consistently on Sheriffs, and they've limited LeMay uh, to not too much yardage. So, so far, a good job by the Tennessee defense where we could really have a ball game here. On second down. And a direct snap to McAllister, the tailback, and that'll pick up three. Batuli on another tackle for Tennessee. So another third and long for Charlotte. Yeah, let's see if Tennessee brings pressure here. They really haven't been able to get any pressure all season. And that trend has continued today with those front four guys. The only way they've gotten pressure today has been by blitzing. And, and, and uh, Jeremy Prude has blitzed several times on third down, even though initially he's showing more of a coverage look here. Empty backfield, Tennessee rushing five. Sheriffs feels the heat and now will tuck it and run for a first down and a wise decision to slide near the 40 yard line to pick up a 15. Yeah, it's always dangerous when you when you work those two middle linebackers on a game, you have to stay in your gaps. You see right there, number two gets out of his gap. You gotta contain the quarterback right there in that pressure situation. Again, you gotta, you gotta be disciplined. Sometimes that rush lane looks good, but even in blitzes, you gotta be disciplined because that's what happens when you blitz. The quarterback gets free and nobody's got a man to man. Sheriff's not known for his rushing, but does a fine job there. And a fresh set of downs for the 49ers. Again, they've been stout though, Mike, against the run. And a nice job bottling up Benny LeMay. And just jamming up the line, Shy Tuttle. Plugging some holes, big number two for Tennessee. Yeah, he's the guy that stood out to me on film. I, I watched this defensive line kind of trying to figure out who the guy was. He's kind of the guy that makes them go. I think he's the best player up front. Number two, Shy Tuttle. Well, a second down and ten now for Charlotte. With time, now Sheriff's going to just rush out and throw it away. I think he felt some heat that might not have necessarily been there. Now, when you've been running all game for your life, that tends to happen. Just ask the guy on the other side and Garantano. Yeah, you're right. He, he probably got out of the pocket a little too quickly. That's a pet peeve of an offensive lineman, Mike. When you have a perfect pocket developed for those guys back there, and for some reason they still feel the need to go and find some pressure. But again, another third and long. Let's we'll see if Tennessee can find a way to get off the field here. Split twins for the 49ers. Pass over the middle, just long and incomplete, almost picked off. Quattlebaum was open. And if that ball is on target, it's an easy catch for Quattlebaum. Yeah, really nice little post route there by Mark Quattlebaum. You see him at the bottom of your screen. Turn that little post route in, and he's got a gap. But again, for the third or fourth time today, Sheriff has just airmailed a guy. You got to put that ball on him. That's a great route. It's clearly not an interception. You see the ball clearly hit the turf. That's just another miss by Sheriff's. A few throws in this game. This is a totally different ball game, Mike Morgan. Galway's already taken one the distance. Another line drive, fielded at the 24. Cutting back at the 25. And Lasso down at the 31-yard line. We'll take a timeout. Tennessee leading it 14 to 3. Now you see the matchup of the slate today. If you had the over in South Carolina Ole Miss, good pick. <laughs> Texas A&M and Auburn. Georgia right now on top of Kentucky, Missouri leading Florida 27 10 in the third. And then, of course, the big one tonight Alabama LSU. And I know you got thoughts on that one. That's interesting, too. Missouri, who Mike, you and I both feel like they're a very talented football team, really pulling it all together today and playing a good game against Florida. Kentucky falling short, but you're right. I am excited about that game tonight. I think we'll find out a lot about both of those teams uh, to kind of figure out. You know, it's, it's in some ways a. Uh, a playoff game, an early playoff game, to see kind of who puts themselves in the driver's seat in the SEC West. On 
play action. Garantano actually had a little bit of time there and then goes underneath. And it's Phil me on the reception. That could be another case, Barrett. We've seen it once or twice before where they might have somebody downfield, but if you're Garantano, you're, you're always anticipating getting hit. Uh, you nailed it. They had Marquez Callaway running a post route down the seam, had one-on-one -on -one coverage, but he did not have full time to really set his feet and throw that ball. And you're right, maybe he did have time, but when you start hearing those foot steps and you've been hitting the ribs eight times in this game already, it's hard to have the courage to set your feet and throw it over and over and over. Madre London in the backfield on second down. Garantano, nicely formed pocket. Rifles one complete at the 30. And bouncing his way to the 35 is Madre London, the senior out of Little Rock, a gain of five. And yeah, that's something we've seen a lot from uh, Tyson Helton is, is really a seven-man protection, keeping a running back and a tight end in to help those O-linemen to give them more time. The downside of that, obviously, is you got fewer guys out in the route, right? I mean, there's not as many people running routes, so it's easier for the defense to cover. But that's one of the adjustments that Tyson Helton has made that's proved to be effective. It's given Garantano just a little bit more time. Third down and six now for Garantano and the Tennessee offense. Missiles one complete. And that'll be a first down. He's falling in love with his tight end, Dominic Wood Anderson. Yeah, this is not surprising. He's he's uh, really played better and better as the season's progressed. He's a guy, again, the coaches love. They feel like he has ideal size for a tight end, 6'4", 257. You know, that's become really a popular position now in the NFL is to kind of have these more receiver-type, lighter tight ends, almost like a bigger wide receiver out there. And that's really what Dominic Wood Anderson is. Good to have that big guy as a safety blanket. On play action, Garantano stripped of the football. It's a live ball, and finally, Garantano sees it and pounces on it. Alex Highsmith, it seems like he's been in the backfield all game long for Charlotte. Yeah, and watch right here. Watch the right tackle position. That, that's the problem. When, when you don't run the football effectively, people are not going to fall for the play action fake. Saw the right tackle right there. He tried to go and act like he was run blocking. But again, the defensive end's not going to buy that. Watch him right here. Tries to fake like he's run blocking. The, the defensive end knows, look, they can't run the football. It's another play action. Does a fantastic job of turning that into a pass rush. But again, that's all set up with the lack of a run game. Seven tackles for loss for that Charlotte defense. And with all due respect to Charlotte's defense, this is more of a problem right now for Tennessee's offense. Garantano, again accurate. And again, a short throw. Jordan Murphy on the grab. And one thing we didn't talk about, that was a fantastic effort by Garantano to get his get him get on that football. Yes. And that could have easily been a turnover. The right tackle, Nathan Nyhouse, they looked like they moved him out to right tackle after I guess they saw the same thing on Drew Richmond than we did and got frustrated with him. Looks like they've now pulled pulled Drew Richmond from the game and kind of reshuffled that offensive line up front. They've now put Chance Hall, a backup guard, into the right guard spot and shifted Nyhouse out to tackle. We had a feeling this could be a four-quarter game, and it's looking like that right now. A third and 16 for the Volunteers. Four-man rush, Garantano chucks it deep and incomplete. Good coverage downfield intended for Brandon Johnson. Marquavis Gibbs on the coverage. It's Johnson, whose father Charles, former major league catcher for the Marlins, among other teams. Again, an, another frustrating po possession, though, for Tennessee right there. They're almost not even pretending to run the football anymore because they've been so ineffective up front. It's allowing those pass rushers to just tee off on these Tennessee O linemen. Fielded precariously at the 21 by Quattlebaum. That's a good way to put yourself in peril. 42-yard punt and nothing on the return. Tyler Bird on the tackle for Tennessee. Let's take you back, shall we? Alabama, LSU, 2012. Barrett, you were there. Game was a close one. Zach Mettenberger connected with Jarvis Landry to get the Tigers the lead. And A.J. McCarron finds T.J. Yeldon under a minute left in the game to shock the Tigers. Alabama winning it. 21 
to 17. Yeah, we kind of stole one right there. I like how we're getting a lot of close up on AJ McCarron and Vinny Sunseri giving a hug there. But yeah, <laughs> we, we kind of stole one a little bit. That was uh, probably deserved to lose that game, but found a way to win it right there at the end. And I want a close up of Barrett Jones on that play. That's what, <laughs> that's what the American public is demanding. Right. You, and we might get one. If you blink, you'll miss it. <laughs> Somebody had to snap that ball to McCarron. Ball start, offense number 60, five and yard somebody penalty. had to deliver First a key down. block, and that somebody <laughs> is Barrett Jones, who oh, we just yeah. happen to have highlighted. That's 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 a that's a good looking man. <laughs> that, was, that was 40 pounds ago. Look at that block. I mean, clearly oh, really, that's your good side. All you can do is block your man, Mike. Right? I mean, I know I wasn't downfield. I didn't have the sexy block on that play. You just got to do your job every play. You know, that's what I tried to do there. So that's how you grade out well, though, right? That's right. I made great calls in that play. That's so. a good grade. I, 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 that's a that's a win. That's a <laughs> assignment was perfect. <laughs> Execution. I had my body on the correct side of the defender. I mean, and the know, snap was precise. The snap was right right in the bread basket. More pressure by Tennessee and a sack of Evan Sheriffs. Alabama LSU, of course, tonight, the premier game, not only in the SEC, but really the country. And look, Alabama has owned this the last seven games, 7-0, seven and oh, over twice as many points as LSU. LSU can barely score against Alabama. You see just 10.4 a game. They've dominated virtually every facet of it since that 9-6 win that LSU had back in November the 5th of I, 2011. I remember, I remember that one too. We, when I was playing at Alabama, we had some very balanced games against LSU. I think lost two times against the Tigers, but since then it's been a one-sided battle. Direct snap to oh. Calvin Camp, and he is blasted behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of three, and that'll be Daniel Batuli, the junior make middle linebacker Read it all the way. A fantastic job right there by Daniel Batuli running through on that defense to create another loss. Watch him right here. Watch the speed and instincts right there. Fantastic job seeing the seam and taking it. Batuli playing well. They've really done a nice job all day locking down the run game. Balls are on top, 14-3. Tennessee on top, 14 to three, a special teams touchdown. That got Smokey excited. The offense has left Smokey less than inspired up to this point. Minus seven yards rushing. The last time Tennessee finished in the red, rushing the football, 2011 against the Georgia Bulldogs. Charlotte has had trouble. Meantime, and that might be a safety. It'll depend on the spot. Forward progress will give it to him at the one foot line. Oh, and it was close too. It was hard to tell if Sheriffs was retreating. And one guy who's come to play today is Kyle Phillips. Has he, he has ever? He's had a heck of a football game. Let's see if we can get a shot here of Kyle Phillips coming in hot. Let's see if Sheriffs is retreating or if he's driven into the end zone. Right here, he's retreating. Ooh, probably a good call, yeah. but probably could have gone either way. Probably a good call, though, to keep him out of the end zone. Man, it was close, though. And again, you got to give Kyle Phillips credit. He, the senior knows he's only got a few games left wearing that orange jersey. He's played a heck of a game here today. He's been terrific today. Timeout, Tennessee. And Tennessee might be hoping that somehow they'll review that spot. You know, even if it winds up being where it is, and I don't think this is going to change. If you're Tennessee, you're about to have tremendous field position, and Marquez Callaway going to try to take another one to the house. Yeah, definitely going to get fantastic field position. Let's look at one more replay. Uh, I think I think when he first makes contact with him, he's still probably out of the end zone right, right there. And that's where it is. And a play like that, it's not where you wind up tackling him. It's where the initial contact is. Right there, the ball's kind of in front of him a little yep. bit as he's holding it. I think that's a good call. It is a good call, and it, it'll, it'll hold up to that spot even though you're not going to get the safety, which Kyle Phillips, if anybody deserves two points for his effort today, it is Kyle yes. Phillips. 
But Tennessee's going to have great field position in a key spot in this game. This is still just a two possession yes. lead for the Volunteers. And you wonder too, right here, when you're at the one foot line, I expect Tennessee to possibly bring a little pressure here. Absolutely. You know, keep in mind, the punter normally is about, you know, 12 to 15 yards behind the long snapper. And right here, you know, you're only going to obviously be at a, a very max 10 yards. And you better keep in mind that you better watch those heels because that, that punter's heels are going to be right on the end line right here. Now normally, normally as a punter, you have three steps, right? You have the one, two, kick. But right here, you really just got one step. It's jammed up. These guys are going to be. They are taking a look, it looks like, at this play just to make sure it wasn't a safety. I still think he made contact when he was probably right around that one foot line. It was close. It was very close, but I think. I don't think that's enough evidence to overturn it from that angle. Well, you got Kyle Corbett who has displayed his rugby punt throughout the day once it bit him on the return for a touchdown by Callaway. Well, and, and, and again, that's another good point, Mike. It's tough to rugby punt in a situation like this. Sure thing, you don't have enough time to roll the out. field stands, it's fourth down. Yeah, the ball faithful, not happy with that. There a lot of a lot of confusion, pointing, outrage, frustration, a lot of emotions, but I think it was the right call. That guy in the far right looked a little like Phil Fulmer. I he don't, did. I don't think Phil's actually, I think he's got better seats. That was Bill Fulmer, <laughs> Phil's cousin. Uh, for was, a second, I had, to, I had to rub my eyes and make sure that wasn't Phil Fulmer. That was Phil Fulmer looked right. But look, we got 10 guys from Tennessee, excuse me, nine guys up on the line of scrimmage. I, I think they're coming after this one. Again, Kyle That's Corbett cannot step backwards, otherwise it would be a safety. He'll quickly boot it, and this is actually his best effort of the day. Field it at the 43. Callaway looking for a block, springs him outside to the 25. And great field position for Tennessee. Two Another flags flag. flying in late. Yep. One at the 33, one at the 15. And you hate that too, it's gonna negate, what was it? Another 20. Great return right there by Callaway. Yeah, it would have been a 20-yard return on a 42-yard punt. Not to mention the fact they would have had tremendous field position at the mm -hmm. 25. But a lot of laundry out there. We got two different flags. Probably some kind of block in the back. During the return, block in the back, receiving team, number 87. Two-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Jacob Warren, a backup tight end and special teamer. Yeah, still, still, still good field position though. Watch number ten right here though. Watch him; he's the one they got for the block in the back. Oh man, that's that's blatant right there. You can boo all you want, Tennessee fans, but that's directly block in the back. That's about as clear cut as it gets. It's actually Tyler Bird. Yep. Tyler Bird will want to block to 87 for the Niners, but still, silver lining. You're on the 45-yard line of Charlotte. You got great field position, and again, they're trying to make this. A three possession game and put it out of reach. This is still very much a football game right now. At some point, Tennessee would love to show they could run the football in this game. They'll open up in the eye. Hand off up the middle. That's positive yardage. They'll take that every time. Four yards. They will. They'll absolutely take that after, again, before that play, negative seven rushing yards going into the fourth quarter. You see right there the average starting field position. Tennessee has had good starting field position today, starting on their own. 43 and have done a nice job pinning Charlotte deep. But again, you got to take advantage when you get field position like this across the 40. I tell you what, a lot of coordinators like to do. They like to take shots when they're in position like this on the 40 yard line. Be wary of the play action right here if you're Charlotte's defense. Banks in the backfield. They'll feed him. And second effort gets him back to the line of scrimmage. But another play where Charlotte gets pursuit and gets in. It's Tyreek Harris on the stop. Yeah, the offensive line just not creating any push up here up front. Again, too much penetration from that Charlotte D. You want to see when you're an offensive lineman, you want to see two or three yards off the ball where you drive those guys and create a new line of scrimmage. This offensive line's been creating a new line of scrimmage. It's just been in their backfield all day. And Barrett is a former offensive lineman. Sometimes it's about technique, but sometimes guys are just, they're not, their talent level is not enough to get the push that you need. Yeah, it's definitely a combination for this, this group of guys right here. Third down, Garantano completes, but a great open field tackle. Eli Wolf caught it, and the moment he did, 
Jeff Gemmell makes the stop for Charlotte. Yeah, I thought they might think about going for this one here on the 38 yard line, but looks like they are going to trot the punter out on the field. Probably the right play, too, by Jeremy Pruden. Your defense is playing well. I know as a fan, you probably want to go for this on your own 37. But look, the priority here has to be to win the football game. Exactly. I mean, they got to find a way to win this game. Charlotte has yet to prove that they can get a whole lot going offensively. Tennessee's defense has been up to the task today. Fair catch just inside the 10. 49ers on offense when we come back. 90. Dari, good stuff. When anytime you pass Peyton Manning in any statistical category that involves college football in the SEC, that is impressive. Drew Locke, and it looks like they finally might get their first SEC win of the year. Again, I, I look at Missouri. Barrett haven't seen them up close and kind of put them yep. under the microscope. They have talent. They do. In Columbia. Look, they have a, a, a two guys who could be first rounders, right, with a, a quarterback in Drew Locke and possibly Albert O. He might sneak into the first yes. round. He's a very talented tight end, a good big body, a nice big target for Drew Locke. Buckner, a very talented defensive lineman. Keep in mind, they've also had five returning starters on the offensive line this yeah, year. Yeah, that never hurts either. Stayed pretty healthy. Tennessee's got to be envious of that. You take a look at the Eastern Division. There you see Missouri trying to get that goose egg off the board. Georgia trying to finish off Kentucky. That would pave the way for another trip to Atlanta for Kirby Smart and company. The Gators, if they cannot come back, will fall to four and three in conference. Gamecocks winning a shootout today against Ole Miss. And look, I think the East in general, to me, has been a lot better than we anticipated. I, I think I've been impressed uh, with the East. Obviously, Kentucky has been good. Georgia, I think a lot of us expected them to be good. Florida has stepped up. You know, that you can make a legit argument right now. Obviously, Alabama and LSU in some ways might be the class of the whole conference. But past that, you know, the, the bottom teams of the East have been pretty solid. So uh, it's been a pretty well-balanced league on that side. That's an excellent point. I, I think people have been waiting for the Eastern Division to step up its game a little bit. I mean, it's been completely overshadowed by the West. I think that's changing. And I think Tennessee, once they get it going here in Knoxville, that'll only amplify that point that the East is back. So is that Tennessee defensive line. Boy, are they getting pressure now. And finally, it's somebody other than Kyle Phillips. That's Bryce Thompson on a blitz. Yeah, you mentioned a great job by Bryce Thompson. Watch him on the top of your screen right here. Just defeats Benny LeMay in one on one. Man, if you're Benny LeMay right there, you got to hit that guy under the chin. But a nice little swim move right here on the inside. Look at that. Great job using your body to get it come up with a big sack to again force a third and long. And that's again how Tennessee has had to create pressure. They haven't been able to do it with their front four. They've had to bring pressure. But when you bring pressure, you want to make sure you capitalize. A good matchup there on a running back by Bryce Thompson and just beats him. Bryce Thompson, a young man who starred in the Shrine Bowl. They plucked him right out of Gamecock territory. Dutch Fork High School in Irmo. Conservative play call there. A little screen pass that goes for eight yards, but that'll set up a fourth down. Charlotte will no doubt punt it away. This is pretty much the antithesis of any Big 12 game you'll ever watch, where they play no <laughs> defense. Yeah, if you're, if you're a Big 12 fan, you're probably not having <laughs> much fun watching this one. But look, I know that this hasn't been the prettiest game for Tennessee, but look, there have been a lot of bright spots this year. Obviously highlighted by that big win over Auburn in some ways, kind of a program-defining win where people saw it all coming together for Jeremy Pruitt. So there have been a lot of bright spots for this Tennessee team. That is the best punt of the day. Look at this one. Look at this punt. And oh. inside the five, my goodness, <laughs> Kyle Corbett uncorks a 75-yard punt with no return. What a punt right here. We talked, we criticized this guy a little bit earlier, but right here, he just unleashes that right leg over the head, a 75-yard punt. Tennessee pinned deep in its own territory. We come back. Stop. 14-3 hour score. It's homecoming here in Knoxville, Tennessee. The Volunteers trying to pick up their fourth win of the year and get one step closer to bowl eligibility. Again, three out of four down the stretch would clinch it for them. The story for the Tennessee offense, that man's been good, but the rushing game has not. 
minus three on the ground. It's been a struggle all year long. Again, two talented backs in Chandler and Jordan, but just not a whole lot of holes opened up against this Charlotte defensive line. You know, these talented backs are getting contacted in the backfield. Again, you want to create that new line of scrimmage. They haven't done that to this point in this game. Garantano will throw from the end zone. Has all day. Deep down the sideline, and that time he underthrew him. One of the few yep. times today, but it'll draw flag, a penalty flag. Callaway contacted by Nafis Lyon. Yeah, not, not Garantano's best throw, like you said. He, he underthrew his receiver Callaway a little bit. Good protection up front. Got to give him credit. They decided to max protect. Pass interference, defense, number eight. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, they, they kept two extra guys in to protect. You want to make sure on the goal line you protect. But a good job by Callaway. A little stop and go. He's got him, actually. He's got two or three steps, but under throws him. Does a nice job coming back to the ball, selling it, and getting the penalty. And make no mistake, those receivers are taught to do that, right? If the ball is underthrown, you make a beeline, you make a path right through that defender, you struggle, act like you can't catch the ball, and you'll get the flag. That's not by accident. That's a good job by Callaway, selling it within the rules of the game and picking up the penalty. We'll go back to our conversation about offensive coordinator Tyson Hilton. When they do sure things up on the line, you'll see more deep throws. Garantano yep. has the arm, and they've got some big play wide receivers to help that vertical game go well. Taylor Davis, what do you have? Yeah, guys, you were talking about the difficulty that Tennessee is having with their run game, and another issue, like you mentioned, is depth. In fact, they're even looking for it within the team. Carlin Vilsamy and Jeremy Banks were moved from defense to running back just this past week. They're looking for anyone. Coach Pruitt said it's an issue of injury. Some of their backs are banged up, but they also are just in need of strong runners. We're seeing that here tonight, guys. Taylor, that's a great point. In fact, they've told us Jeremy Banks, they think he could be a star linebacker. He's just playing running back out of necessity right now, especially with Ty Chandler banged up. All things that will be addressed in recruiting. <laughs> and when you're Jeremy Pruitt, you take this job, you know that's where it's all going to begin. You do. And look, Jeremy Pruitt, he's nothing if not blunt and honest, right? If you've heard some of his press conferences yes. this year, the way he's talked to the reporters, like there, there's, he makes no secret that he feels like he doesn't have the guys here. You know, one thing that he said to us that was very telling in the meetings, he said, look, I came from places like Alabama, Florida State. When I got here, there were only two guys on the roster that I recruited, right, that, that I had been chasing after those top tier programs. And one of them right now is injured, right, in Trey Smith. And so uh, they want to get some better players in here. Uh, but again, I think Jeremy Pruitt's a fantastic recruiter. He'll do a good job getting the right guys in place. And one thing about Jeremy Pruitt, much like Kirby Smart when he took the Georgia job, when you've been around Nick Saban in Alabama for a while, you know what it takes. Deep ball incomplete. You know how to change the culture. You've seen Kirby do it step by step. Now, let's be clear. This was a much more difficult rebuild for Jeremy Pruitt than sure. it was for Kirby Smart following Mark Rick to Georgia. But still, the point is still valid in that you have an idea of how to build those blocks. You have an idea of what it's going to take in recruiting. The structure, the way they do things around here, not dissimilar to what he saw Nick Saban do in Tuscaloosa. I agree, and that's why I think he's the right man for the job. I, I'm just talking to him, and you can get a sense, Mike, when you walk into a building, uh, if the players really believe in what the coach is doing. And every player we talk to believes in what Jeremy Pru is doing. They feel like he's got things headed in the right direction, and he's doing it the right way. Jeremy Pruitt still teaching, still encouraging Tennessee, hoping to pick up its fifth, fourth win of the year. Jeremy Pruitt working, teaching, trying to get his guys to improve here as we come down to the home stretch of the regular season. Time to dig in, brought to you by Coyote. Barrett, what do you have? Yeah, let's talk about the Tennessee defense. They've done a fantastic job today. Eight tackles for loss, three sacks. Just constant pressure in that big backfield. Probably the biggest stat in this second half, only giving up 45 yards of total offense. This defense has stood tall today, led by that man right there, Kyle Phillips. He's done a fantastic job getting pressure all day, and they have made sheriffs uncomfortable all day back in that pocket. A great job today by the Tennessee defense. Meanwhile, Charlotte is still in this game if they can get anything going on offense not that time sheriffs pummeled and somehow delivers oh, a perfect strike to calvin camp what, what a, a play what a throw by sheriffs right there watch kyle phillips again just creating havoc in the backfield 
again coming off the edge. Just beats the guard. Does a nice job coming up and under. Oh, man, lays a big lick right there on Sheriffs, but he stands tall and throws a strike. And again, Mike, it's, a, it's an 11-point game. There's six minutes left. This game's not over. A touchdown, two-point conversion, a field goal would tie it up. Under six and a half to go. Back to the ground, LeMay. Gets to the edge, turns it up to the 30-yard line, a gain of seven. Alexis Johnson and Daniel Batuli on the stop for Tennessee. We talked about how good this defense has been today. Just over 200 yards for the entire day uh, for this for this uh, uh, Charlotte offense. But they're going to have to stand tall here one last time, maybe more than once, but definitely here to force a stop here. And they're going wildcat again, Mike. Direct snap to LeMay. No, I haven't seen that play really no. go for much at all today. I don't know why you keep going to it, to no. be honest with you. It was a big it was, it, it was a, a big wrinkle, I'm sure, that they were excited about using, but hasn't really paid many dividends. You know, I I, I think the Wildcat, I, I kind of think it's gonna it's gonna continue to kind of phase out. And go the way of the dodo. And, and the thing is you just never throw it to the quarterback. Right. Like people just aren't respecting the quarterback because it's just a lot for that running back to turn out there and throw it. It was huge about 10 years ago at the Miami Dolphins. And Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown it trickled its way down to the college game. I'm, go, I'm with you. I think it's starting to phase out. Third and two. LeMay trying to push the pile. Second effort will make it close, but it looks to be short. So an interesting decision here for Charlotte. Right, right now it's a two possession game. So do you kick the field goal? and make it a one possession game. Obviously it'd still be eight points, but right. still a one possession game or do you go for it? I think you're on the road in Neyland Stadium. I think you go for it. It's fourth and inches. I'm with you. You go behind your big right side, Nate Davis over there, try to find a way to get a half yard. You Looks don't like know it. when you're gonna be back down here. No, nope. we're keeping the offense on the field here. One of my pet peeves in life, Mike, I talk about it all the time. They're in gun on fourth and a half yard. <laughs> LeMay is behind Sheriffs. LeMay gets it. Stacked oh. up near the line. It is all going to come down to the spot. Oh, man. I'm not sure he got it. I don't think he did from that spot. Great job again by the Tennessee defense. Getting penetration in that backfield. And again, there's... And there's not even close. No. Not even close. And there's two things. There's only two things that can ever stop an offense for less than a half yard. Penetration and linebacker run throughs. Look at the penetration right there by big Daniel Batuli, as well as Shy Tuttle up front, man. Shy Tuttle, even though Daniel Batuli made that play, Shy Tuttle will never that won't go in the stat book at all. But he took that center and he drove him two yards in the backfield, creating kind of a little bubble in time for the linebackers to make the play. A fantastic job by Shy Tuttle. Again, you'll never see that on the stat sheet but a big stop there for Tennessee's defense. And now Tennessee can burn some clock. Up two scores, four and change remaining. Stay in bounds, young man. Banks does. Another picks up four in the process. Problem with burning the clock though, Mike, is you gotta be able to run the football. Let's see if Tennessee here can take some air out of it. Pick up a few first downs on the ground. I can't think of one first down all day they picked up on the ground. I think. Almost all their first downs have been through the air. Now you're looking at uh, at last count minus three rushing yards for the Volunteers. Timeout called by Charlotte to stop the clock with 4-11. Tennessee inching closer and closer to its fourth win of the season. Tuesday, November the 6th marks the anniversary of the first college football game played in 1869 between Princeton and Rutgers. In 2019, ESPN and ABC will celebrate the 150th anniversary with a year-long initiative, including several documentaries, two weekly series entitled The American Game and The Greatest. As somebody who's kind of a history nerd and a college football geek, I can't wait for that kind of stuff. I'll be glued to that. I agree. That, that will be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see that whole series. ESPN's done a fantastic job with that. It's going to be a treat. 
gaping hole up the middle. There's your big hole for the ground game. And Jeremy Banks says thank you very much. Nine yards and a first down. There's the best run of the game right there. We talked about the young freshman out of Cordova, Tennessee, Jeremy Banks. A gaping hole. Finally, a big hole to run through. He does a nice job getting north and south, picking up a first down on the ground. He might be a linebacker next year, but he looks like a pretty good running back this year. <laughs> The offensive line did a great job right there of making a big hole for Jeremy. Freshman out of Cordova, Tennessee. Working roll clock here. Again on the ground and one uh, ankle tackle away. Unfortunately, they're going to get a hold here on the left side. Didn't even need to do it either. Banks almost busting that one. And now he gets up a little gimpy. And a penalty flag all the way back at the Tennessee 40. Yeah, that was a good play design. Call that, it's just a classic pin and pull scheme where you pin the, the end man on the line down. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 58. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Well, I was wrong, they, they got him for a, a face mask in, instead of a, a hold, but same general principle applies right here. Got him with the pen and pull. Take a look right here at 58. See him pulling out there. Oh, it just gets the face mask right there. Didn't even need to do it. But a good scheme again, back-to-back -back runs with big holes. That's yeah. got to be frustrating right there if you're the Vols. As an offensive lineman, do you ever think you're going to get away with a face mask like that? Yeah, that was that one was pretty blatant, unfortunately. It's, it's kind of tough. Chico transfer out of Arizona Western. The coaches feel like he can develop into a good player. Only about 275 pounds right now. He needs to put some weight on. Nice cutback. An ankle tackle at the 36 to Ben DeLuca on another stop, but nine more yards. Tim Jordan on that carry. Stop. 2.53 to play here in Knoxville. It is homecoming in Tennessee in great shape for another victory and another step closer to bowl eligibility. Really had to have this one. Coaching staff, you could tell, legitimately concerned that any type of letdown today, Charlotte's the kind of team that could sneak up and bite you. Doesn't appear that that's going to happen. And the Volunteers will have something else to build upon and try to find Another couple wins on the schedule, which will be nothing but SEC from this point on. Madre London is the deep back on second down and 16. Mm. That'll be another tackle for loss for Charlotte. Now it's high spin. Well, the highlight of this year, it, it's pretty easy. If you're a Tennessee fan, you had to love this. Tennessee, Jordan-Hare Stadium, Garantano hitting Jawan Jennings, 25-yard touchdown pass that gave the balls a three-point lead. And then Alante Taylor, an eight-yard fumble recovery. He'd eventually scoop it up and pick it up and get the touchdown. <laughs> Tennessee would beat Auburn 30-24. to You know, that was their first road win against a ranked opponent in 12 years. Yeah, Phil Fulmer, celebrate. Get loud. And that had a lot of Tennessee fans kind of getting a glimpse of what the future right. could be in this new era. And the future would be great if they could somehow scratch their way into a bowl game. They're going to battle Kentucky. That'll be right here at the friendly confines of Neyland Stadium. Missouri, two teams that are playing some great football. Missouri about to pick up a win, it looks like, against Florida. And then at Vanderbilt in Nashville, a game that, believe it or not, Vanderbilt has started to get the... Uh, better edge on, of that rivalry of late but it, it's certainly doable Barrett where they yeah. can get those wins no there are definitely three winnable games right there obviously Kentucky has a high ranking and I still think Tennessee has a chance to compete with them if they play their best game you got to find a way to win two of those three and get bowl eligible to get those extra practices as we mentioned Mizzou up 38 17 right now in Florida so they're going to be playing with some extra confidence by the time they see the volunteers Kentucky and Georgia big game in the Eastern Division and Georgia's going to win it. They're up 34-17 with a minute and a half to play over there at Kroger Field in Lexington. 
with more on Tennessee and the future of the Volunteers. Here's Taylor. Yeah, guys, you talk about the progress of this program, and I talked to a few Tennessee players about just that. They said, listen, we understand you don't turn a program around in one year. We're practicing hard, we're learning scheme, and we know it's going to take time. But the important thing is, guys, they said they have bought into what this coaching staff is teaching them, and they feel this program is on the right track. Well, and you get that sense, Barrett, when you, when you sit down and talk to the players as we did, Yep. Uh, you know, there's it's no secret there's a little bit of a toxic environment here a year ago. That's not the case now. There's a lot of positivity, a lot of good vibe in the air in this program. The culture is, is certainly changing, and I would have to say for the better. No doubt. You know, I, I, I talked to every player, and, and some of them kind of just one-on-one -on -one and asked them what their impressions were of Coach Pruitt. And they all said the same thing. They loved his honesty. You never have to wonder where you stand with this guy, right? right. He's very open and honest about what he thinks about you, what you can do better, what, what you can do to get playing times, of kind of what the standard and the expectation is. Pass complete underneath, much like you, Barrett Jones. He is not gonna sugarcoat things. He's gonna tell it like it is. He's not, he's not gonna sugarcoat things. And I, I think that's what, you know, when you come in, you assess the situation, you gotta be honest with yourself, right? That's the first step, is being honest kind of with what you've been doing and how it's not good enough and how you can change it. A nice play right there. Uh, Tennessee defender looked like number eight Allen doing a good job getting there stripping that ball out. And we'll see if Tennessee decides to sit back and play coverage or dial up pressure on this third down. They've dialed up a lot of pressure tonight on third down but probably in this stage of the game wouldn't surprise me if they sit back on their heels a little bit play underneath. That'll give Charlotte a fresh set of downs a minute 27 ago. Chris Phillips a tight end on the grab. And I know this game at this point is probably out of hand, but if I know Jeremy Pruitt, he does not want to give up any points here. His defense has played a gem of a football game. Sheriffs with time. And then throws short, incomplete, and out of the hands of Kofa. Well, they're dropping eight in the coverage right here, I guess. Jeremy Pruitt says we're struggling to get pressure with four. We might as well just rush three and drop as many into coverage as possible. We've got eight men in coverage the last two plays in this game. Don't want to give up the big play in this situation. Jeremy Pruitt, the son of a coach, coordinator at Bama, Georgia, FSU, before coming to Tennessee. He says, you know, we were so bad at the beginning of the year. We just, we just had to get better week by week, get better. The Auburn victory obviously stands out. They'll have some things they can work on after this win, no doubt. A little bit banged up right now, and they get healthy. Certainly a chance to play better, and they'll play better on defense here with a pick by Bryce Thompson, the freshman. And the defensive staff, which is to our left, they were fired up. I could hear a lot of high fives over here. They were very fired up. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt talked about forcing turnovers. Looks like Sheriffs was not on the same page right there uh, with his receiver number 87, Chris Phillips. Tried to go with the back shoulder, but the receiver didn't know it. And a great job right there in coverage. Just textbook zone coverage, playing that outside shoulder right there by number 20, Bryce Thompson. And a big turnover that will seal this game. And they're playing Rocky Top here in Neyland Stadium. Third pick of the year for the freshman Bryce Thompson. There are a lot of freshmen on this two deep. They believe he's got a great future. Yeah. Let's see why. Now Tennessee will put the finishing touches on a 14-3 victory over Charlotte, improved to four and five on the year. Look, and we said it coming in, you got to find a way to win this game. Again, yep. Charlotte. Not a bad team. I think impressed by their defense today, but Tennessee more impressed by their defense. The way they came in and played today, they played hard. They played tough, got a lot of pressure on Charlotte. Uh, didn't ever let them get comfortable in the run or pass game and just really dominated this football game. I know it won't show up. We're talking about stats and box scores. I know it won't show up very well in the box score either, but the more I see Jarrett Garantano play, the more I'm impressed. Again, he got hit a bunch today, but was very accurate once again. I agree. The kid's tough, man. I, I think you got the right guy in place, right? He's now got two years left. 
you got to find a way to get a protection. Obviously, getting Trey Smith back at some point in the future will really help that. But you got to find a way to protect this kid because he can make plays down the field if you give him time. Tennessee with a 14-3 win over the Charlotte 49ers. And the Volunteers will get ready for that home stretch all-conference games. You see what has happened now. Georgia has already clinched the Eastern Division. They'll be in Atlanta for a second consecutive year. The Kentucky Wildcats fall to 5-2. and two. The Gators 4-2. and two. They are about to lose to Missouri. So Missouri is going to pick up its first conference win of the season. And there's Tennessee at 1-4. and four. And if they can somehow improve to 3-5, and five, they're going bowling. For more on that in this game. Let's send it down to Taylor. Coach Root, we have to start talking defensively. Your guys really had a day today, capped off with that pick there at the end. What stood out to you most from your defense today? Well, we didn't give up many big plays, so uh, at least we made them earn it. And, you know, they probably had a few penalties that helped us along the way, and we got two turnovers. Talk to me a little bit about your quarterback, Jared Garantano. A lot expected out of him. He shows toughness week in and week out. As you head into the rest of November, what more do you want to see from him? Well, first of all, offensively, we're going to have to be able to run the football. If we can't run the football, I'd hate to play quarterback. Got to be able to run the football. So, uh, But Jarrett's doing a good job. Um, I don't know. Got to watch the film from today and see. But um, offensively, we got to be able to run the football. As your first year here at Tennessee, what did this homecoming win mean to you? Well, I think it's important for uh, our fan base, everybody associated with Tennessee. Uh, it's always good to come home. So I'm, I'm glad that we actually could give them something to celebrate about. All right, Coach, thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats to the Tennessee Volunteers. Back in the win column. Again, the final score, Tennessee 14, Charlotte 3. For Taylor Davis, Barrett Jones, and our entire crew, this is Mike Morgan saying so long from Knoxville as we send it to Darinoka in the studio.